Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. In this one I want to remake this rain shader that I saw over on Twitter and uh, to do that I'm going to do a multi-part series. So there's a lot involved. There's the puddles, there's the uh, small raindrops, there's the big raindrops. Uh, let's get into it. So uh, what I have so far is the uh, little raindrops. That's what we're going to be talking about in this tutorial and we're going to build up. And I haven't done a shader nodes tutorial in a long time so I'm excited for this. Let us begin. So, uh, because this is a shader nord, nord, this is Skyrim now, uh, because this is a shader node tutorial, uh, what we need to do is a different kind of setup than all these geometry node videos. I'm going to delete everything and I'm going to add in a plane. This plane is going to be our, uh, basically our placeholder for where we're going to put our material on. I'm going to scale it by four so we have a bigger surface of the ground and go into the shading workspace where we are going to make a material. So. As I like to say, the name of the game is putting the right nodes here to get those tiny little ripples. So before we do that, let me show you kind of the game plan for how we're going to do this so it doesn't look like a bunch of random nodes. If we look at the object coordinates, which you can see are centered at the origin, uh, we want to make one big ripple. If we can do that, we can make a bunch of tiny ripples. To do that, I'm going to look at its length from the center. And there's a couple ways to do that. I think the length node is the easiest, so it's going to be zero in the middle, and it's going to expand radially, or not radially, spherically outwards. And if I take this and I bring it through a color ramp, we can, and you can do this with sign functions and all this, but I'm going to literally draw my little ripple. Forget my little pony. My little ripple is all the rage now. So I'm going to kind of center this at point four and, whoops, I'm going to center my black handles at 0.4 and 0.6 and make my white handle uh, brighter and set it to ease. And you can see uh, this kind of looks like a donut, uh, but as I add to our um, length thing, uh, you can see how this could kind of look like a ripple. Uh, to make it look even more like a ripple, we could add kind of like a grayish one and another black handle. So we're just doing one ripple now. We'll make it more complicated soon. So I think uh, this should look pretty okay. Uh, I'm trying to think. I think the first ripple is the strongest, and then it gets weaker and weaker and weaker. Uh, so I'm going to do something like this, second handle like this, and make this like even weaker. So now when we play this, we get kind of like a double ripple coming out of this. And you can make another set uh, that looks even weaker. And I'm going to do that. So something like this, and a black handle. And each one should be, I don't know if it's linearly or exponentially, but should be smaller than the last. So we have a ripple that looks kind of complicated. Uh, now the name of the game is making a bunch of them. So instead of just having our object coordinate system, so it's kind of centered here and then everything's based on this length, uh, we want a bunch of coordinate systems and a bunch of lengths. Uh, so to do this, here's an old trick. Uh, take object coordinates and scale them. Mm. You could use generated coordinates actually to make this simpler. I'm going to take generated coordinates. I'm going to multiply them, multiply them by 1, 1, 0. In other words, I'm going to mute the Z vector so we don't get any of this blueness. So it's just this. We take it, and here's the trick. We take it and we scale it by, let's say, 5. And whatever you scale it by, uh, we then run it through a fraction. And I'll explain what all this means. But you can see this is now a 5 by 5 grid. Uh, when we scale by 5, instead of a 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1, uh, we're now going from 0 to 5, which is why it's brighter, and fraction dices it up into 0 to 1 intervals. So 0 to 5 goes 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 5 times. In other words, when I make this 10, it will have 10. And the cool thing is, if I now subtract, so I want to turn this into a... Um, object coordinates, so you can see the origins over here. So we need to subtract by 0 0.5, 0 0.5 uh, to center this, I believe, or maybe we need to add, I don't know. Yeah, subtract by 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and now we have a bunch of object coordinates. Run this through the length. So instead of uh, using object coordinates, we're using our tiled object coordinates. Uh, we should now get something that looks a bit like this. So we have a bunch of ripples. It's a little hard to tell. It kind of looks like a floor mosaic pattern, uh, which this is a good way to make that. But I want you to imagine we have a bunch of ripples that are coming outwards. Okay? So we can take all these nodes, put it here. 
Um, but you can see all the ripples are kind of synchronized in a way. So what I want to do is I want to offset them by a random amount. So here's another trick. For each of these uh, tiles, these uh, coordinate systems, what we can do is we can generate a random number. Here's another trick. Uh, take this one to ceiling, floor, whatever, and it's going to take our thing and it's going to round it up to the nearest... Uh, Okay, let, let me say this again. We have a coordinate system, we scaled it, and ceiling will take it to the nearest integer, so now it's kind of uh, discrete going from one tile, you can see, another tile, another tile, it's kind of hard to tell. But the point is, we've made this discrete, and when we run it through a white noise texture, uh, we get random numbers per tile. So if I add it to that, you're going to see our ripples are going through different amounts. And let's actually animate these. So I'm going to add... You can see as I add them, the ripples are playing. And I guess another thing we should take care of is this like boundary, like it's kind of conforming to the square, but we'll take care of that. Uh, we want to animate this thing. So I'm going to use, there's still not a time node, I don't believe, in Shader Editor. No, there's not. So we're going to do it the old fashioned way. We're going to add a driver. Hash frame gives, it, gives us the frame number. Dividing by 100 makes it slower. And now when we play this, I guess it should be a subtraction. Uh, you can see that we have our ripples playing. If, if anything, they're a bit slow, so I'm going to divide it by 40 to make time go faster. So a couple issues here. It's starting to get there, uh, but a couple issues here. One, uh, you can see the frame of these. So you can kind of see the square that makes up each tile. And another thing, they're all kind of going at the same speed, I guess. And once they happen, they don't happen again is another issue. So let's start with the they don't happen again issue. So basically, we're adding this thing, and it's going across our color ramp, but it doesn't repeat. A uh, simple solution to that. Same way we used fraction here to repeat our coordinate system, we're going to use fraction here to make this loop. Okay, so something like that. Although, I'm noticing that it kind of like clips off, although I don't think that's that big of an issue, because once the puddle's big enough, or the ripple's big enough, that's fine. So we have, and once it's at a small scale, you wouldn't notice either. So that's kind of one thing taken care of. Another thing I'm noticing is, again, you can see the squareness here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our length. Again, we have one for each of these uh, coordinate systems, our tiled coordinate system. I'm going to use a map range. I'm going to invert it. So instead of the length going from 0 to 1, it's going to go from 1 to 0. And I'm just going to remap this so we can kind of see these circles. If we take this kind of like gradient that we're making, and we multiply it by the original thing, what's going to happen? It's going to limit our ripple so you don't see the thing, because we have this, and let's focus on this one where you can see the boundary. We've taken this, saying uh, we're going to fade it as it goes outwards, we multiplied it, and now it's not going to be as strong. So now it's looking a lot more like ripples, and they do cut off, and you could fix that by instead of using fraction, you can use a smooth uh, remapping thing. You could, uh, but I, I think this is pretty good. And notice, notice, this is all dependent on the scale. The larger the scale, the more of these we get. Of course, it's looking more like a circuit board or something. Uh, we'll take care of that. But it, it is looking like little ripples. So to make this look more good, and let's uh, name this rain part one. I'm going to put the final product in the Patreon. Uh, to make this look more random, I want them to go at different speeds. I don't want there to be a ripple in every square. There's a lot of randomization we can do. So first of all, first of all, instead of ha uh, having them all go at a speed of hash frame divided by 40, what we can do, and I'm going to separate by XYZ because white noise generates color, which means we can get three channels of random numbers here, if you think about it. Oh, connect the color. Doi. We can get three channels of random numbers here. Uh, if we use one of these random numbers, we can map a range from 0 to 1, because that's what white noise outputs, to, well, our speed is roughly 40, so let's have it go from 30 to 50. So each of these is going to output a slightly different speed, and that should randomize the speed of these ripples a little. So the, some of them go slightly slower, some of them go slightly faster. Uh, to make this more abundantly clear, if I set this to 1, you're going to see that they definitely go at different speeds. Maybe we can make it more extreme. 20 to 40. Okay, so that randomizes it quite a bit. Another thing is I don't want there to be rain in every single one. Um, so what I can do is I can use another random channel. 
I can say for each of these tiles, tell me if it's greater than or less than some amount. So this kind of makes a cell turn on and off kind of gradient. And if I multiply our final result, which is our ripples, if I multiply it by this, only some of these cells are going to be activated. And this makes it look more spontaneous. So when this threshold's very low, all these tiles are enabled. And when this threshold's very high, none of them are enabled. Uh, so the way this looks is now we have no ripples. And as I bring this slightly below one, we're going to have more ripples. So I'm going to keep this very close to one, and I'm going to increase the scale. And this will make it look less like a circuit board, as you can see. At least that, that, that's the hope. Now, if we wanted to randomize this even more, we could have some of these be different sizes. But I think, mm, let's do that. I don't see why, why not. Let's have some of these ripples be slightly bigger than others, even though you wouldn't be able to tell, I don't think. So we have our coordinate system. Uh, to make them bigger or smaller, we run them through a scale. So I'm going to scale by one. And what this effectively does is if we plug this in, so all we're doing is we're running this through a scale it's going to scale up our ripples. If we scale them too much, you're going to see the boundary again. Um, but if we scale them between like one or maybe three, we're going to have different kinds of results. So maybe what I can do is I can use the third channel, this third random channel that we get per tile. I'm going to send it through a map range. And instead of zero to one, we'll have it go from one to three. So you can see these are all values larger than one or equal to. I'm going to run this through the scale, and now you can see our coordinate system, if we zoom in here. Some of them get brighter, some of them don't. It's a little hard to tell, but I think it will be more abundantly clear when we look here. So this is before. They're all kind of the same scale, and after. Add a bit of randomization. And this kind of looks like a thing. So really, it's all about finding the right scale at this point. If we made it super you know, big, it's going to look like big ripples. Hint, hint, this is how we're going to do the big ripples. Um, but it, as we make it smaller, or sorry, larger the number, you know, smaller the thing, the more dicing. But as we make the ripples smaller and smaller, it's going to look more realistic, I think. Okay? And really the name of the game is we're not just going to use this as a white, black and white mask. Uh, what we're going to do is just a bit of a hint, is we're going to run this through a principled BSDF. And then we're going to say, oh, bump it by this height. And bump that. So we're, we're using a normal thing. And it's going to generate these like normals that catch the light, especially as we lower the roughness and increase the metallicness to make it look like water. So it's shiny. It's going to look like these like little ripples. Now, one thing I'm thinking is that these are going a bit too slow. So we could always bump it up. So if we make this one, yeah, that makes it faster. So the speed instead of 20 to 40, let's make it 15 to 25. And these will make it faster on average. Maybe we could have some stragglers, something like that. So it's not perfect, but I think uh, especially since it's so visually small, it will get us there. And don't forget, we do have this slider that in can increase the number of little dots. So when it's at zero, we have all the tiles. When it's close to one, remember we have this uh, thing, it will be less of them. So again, at this point, it's all about finding the right numbers that work for your scene. So we could have heavy rain or light rain. Okay. Please tell me I was recording the screen. I was. So uh, what did we learn in this part? We learned how to make little ripples. In the next part, we are going to kind of reuse this and uh, make larger ripples. Or maybe I should make the puddles first. I'm not sure. Uh, join me in the next part. We'll continue it. Bye.